right, with what we just witnessed on Tuesday night, my question to you, Razor, why is this even going to be a playoff series between the Caps and the Bruins? I mean, holy smokes. The Providence, Boston Bruins, I mean, go and at sometimes take it to the NHL Washington Capitals, yet lose 2-1 to one on a goal that you're going to explain to me in a moment. Okay, I can't wait to hear it, the goalie <laughs> positioning. I know the goalie union's big on it. Help me out here. Welcome into Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor. I'm Billy Jaffe, Andrew Raycroft, and uh, R.C., the man, the myth, the legend behind the curtain, one day will be exposed Mr. and brought Oz. to the people. Yes, he is. Um, and uh, we're going to touch on a couple of things in this episode. We're going to quickly go over the game. This is commando style, folks. All right, busy week ahead, a great week ahead as Razor and I get you ready for playoffs. Uh, we're going to touch on what we've got going this coming week, and uh, we're going to quickly go over this game. I, w- I want to start uh, with this. Half kidding, half serious. The Bruins dressed 13 different players razor than what they saw on Monday night. 13. I thought it was going to be eight. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, 13. This is, like, amazing. And complete kudos to the Bruins for doing that. I mean, brilliant. Absolutely. Um and while it wasn't a pretty game, and I can't imagine there was much intensity for the Caps on the other side, it's still the NHL, and the Caps dressed most, not all, of their lineup, and yet the, the we'll call them the young Bruins, held their own, especially in the third period, I thought. They did hang in, and, and it goes right back to your point. I mean, the Bruins just have to throw their sticks on the ice. It'll be a, a 4 nothing sweep, and, and the Caps will be out of the playoffs in 10 days from now, right? That's that's how no we problem. can look at it. That's what we can deduce from, from t- the game uh, on Tuesday night. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I, great on great on the kids coming in, stepping in, giving their effort, get, showing the organization – how much they've worked this year and how much they're ready to step in. Uh, I, a guy like Tenorti really showed himself well, showed himself that he's ready to step in if need be on the back end, and and the same with some of the forwards. So uh, good on them, good on the organization to have guys pulling the same rope all the way through the organization and, and showing up. But to that point, the Caps weren't up for it, I'm sure, the same way they would have been. Uh, or they will be on Saturday mm-hmm. night. That's that's a different animal altogether. And it, it was it was just one of those games. Don't get hurt on, on both sides, especially and a lot the closer Caps. for the Caps, though, man. I mean, Jensen, Absolutely. Chara in the first, Lars Eller looked like he you know, yeah, holding he your got, breath every shift. You're real legit, and we talked about it after Monday night's game. Like, don't bring anybody on the trip. Right. Do not bring anybody on the trip because you're going to be holding your breath every shift, every slap shot. Every play into the corner, every four check, someone's going to lose an edge. Someone gets hit with a puck randomly, and and it it really hurts your chances come playoff time. How about Oscar Steen taking Zidane Ochara, who did either toe pick, lost an edge, something like that at the same time, you know, simultaneously to the contact. Steen was six hits in the game. I mean, I liked the kid when I saw him with the bees a few times. Mm-hmm. I liked him in this game too. I I absolutely love his gusto. I do. I love his gusto. Luckily, I do agree with Butch. After the game, you know, Coach Bruce Cassidy talked about uh, Studnika playing with some, you know, conviction. I thought so, too. One time he overpassed. One time. The other times he shot the puck quickly. Um, Thought he was good. I did think Jake DeBrusque showed. And he had to play. Like, Jake had to play. I know he's a vet, quote, unquote. He doesn't get the night off. No way. No. And and, and, and I, and I, I... I don't disagree. I'm I'm hopeful that he is starting to find his game, and I'm hopeful that he can carve out a, a role for himself uh, in the bottom six for yeah, these and, playoffs coming up. And it's two separate situations. And I'll touch on Studnika and Steen. Those guys are they're still trying to fight and claw, and every opportunity they get under the bright lights of the NHL, they need to to show themselves and they need to show that they're pros. They need to show that they have an opportunity, you know, the ability next year to step in when need to be, if it's not the rest of the playoffs. Uh, and conversely, a guy like Jake DeBrusque is, is trying to get his game ready to be a big difference maker come Saturday and Tuesday. And I thought both sides of that ledger, the, the young guys trying to make a name for themselves come next training camp, did a nice job, and, and a guy like Jake DeBrus, he could have been playing on the outside, and mm-hmm. he could be you know coasting through. But I, I thought, to your point, 
he 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 showed himself well, and and that should give everybody a, you know a little bump too, like including himself that he went out and worked hard and he got better tonight, he got closer to that playoff ready that everyone's expecting him to be on the the bottom six forwards. I had I had no issue with this anybody in this game for the Bruins. Um, downside: Jakub Zaboro injured, only played the first period out with the upper body injury after taking a look like a six. Solid hit, I should say. Significantly solid, but clean um, mm-hmm. in the neutral zone. Um, hopefully he's okay, and it was just one of those yeah, precautionary. Precautionary, right? That's, that's hope. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's hope. Um, I'm incredibly encouraged by the play of Camphor, who played over 24 minutes, a career high, twenty uh, number two overall career high for him, so second most. And then Jared Tenorti, player you mentioned too, I thought had a very good game, playing with the bubble, playing with the mm-hmm. facial protection as he had to have his – I think he had to have his nose reset too after that whole Garrett Hathaway uh, uh, injury. Um, Garnet, Hath- sorry, uh, earlier about two weeks ago or so, mm-hmm. he went yeah. face first into the wall. Um, but I liked it. I mean, I like. I mean, let's talk Swayman. Let's get to the goal. Yeah. I mean, overall yeah. the game, excellent, excellent again. Mm-hmm. Great calmness, um, and uh, t- talk me through how Raffle's shot goes in from the goal from sure. below the goal line. Okay, it's, it's helped me yeah. out. Here. Yeah, and it, it, we it, we could take the whole show because we're talking a lot about like with other goaltenders and and you know I'm, I'm hanging around a lot with with Brian Decord, who's the the goalie guru and with the Arizona Coyotes, and we're talking about ideas and and thoughts on that exact play and what's the right way to play it, and you know you're looking at. So we'll start off. That's that's the play. It's called an RVH. Everybody, it's, uh-huh. what everybody does, they get into their RVH on the side and basically reverse taking, VH, reverse VH, and and right. you're you're basically dropping on that right post. You're dropping your right leg, leaning over, trying to seal the post as much as you can to both take the shot and also be able to move off of that post if there's a pass. We know how much east west is going on in the game that pass across is much easier to move if you've got that RVH and you, you're loaded up. You're completely loaded up to move anywhere across to your left in, mm-hmm. in the situation that we're talking about. The issue is, is you open up that top short side space instead of standing up. And mm-hmm. you can see if you watch the replay in the goal, there is a Capitals back door who's there he recognizes that he sees that and he just drops a little bit early and he doesn't get he he gets too he doesn't get flat enough so he has a little bit of angle which allows that opening and when he get behind the line it's actually an easier shot for the player because he doesn't have to be perfect right he can bank it off the goaltender once he gets behind the line if he's if he's above the line there's really nothing there because the goalie's head's there but as you get lower below the line you can bank it off now i, I w- you know it would be beautiful to be able to go back because what i've noticed tuka doing now what tuka's doing is once that guy gets down below the line he's actually going into his net to, a, to, to take away that bank shot opportunity, basically going right into the net as that pass goes. He's almost into a knee lock or a thigh lock at that point, not a toe lock where Swayman was. Toe lock meaning right along the post. It, Tuca puts his whole body in the net, which takes away any of that bank opportunity because the puck just goes flying across the slot, flying mm-hmm. across the front of the net. Uh, it, it's a hockey sense play to a point, and in its ex, in its experience as well, and that's where you know Swayman's going to learn to to catch that. Um, you'll see some of the older guys, Flurry, standing up on that play now. Uh, I've seen Devin Devin Dubnik standing up on that play now, yeah. and just uh, taking all of that away. Now it, it does. It, it, it's, it opens uh, up the back door. It I opens get. up the back door. You can't move laterally once you start standing up. You're going to give it away, but you're not giving that shot away. So I, ideally, Swayman doesn't play that the way he does with only a second left in the game as well because that you give him that pass. Let him try and make that perfect pass. If they pass make that with pass, right. Left. Yeah, right. tip your hat, right? And yeah. it, it, Again, goaltending is about percentages, and, and you're playing, playing the percentages, playing the odds, and, and in that situation – Sometimes you have to read it differently, and, and that goes into being a young goaltender and, and figuring out uh, those situations out on the ice. And, and he got burnt with it, and, and I'm, I'm sure he'll learn from it. Uh, but that's what's going into it. it it's, it's a complete 
uh, you would see 99% of the guys do exactly what Swayman did and, and probably 80% of them get beat with the same shot because it was I, a pretty decent shot off the head. It was a very decent shot. Okay, we'll yeah. give the raffle credit to him. Yeah, because he, he did that on purpose, everybody. Right, like that wasn't, right. he wasn't just, he, he, he tried to he shoot. Knew exactly he, yep. he knew how much time was left. Yep. He knew how much time was left. Get it yeah. there. He's using his speed. He's got a little length and he, and he zips it up there. I just, I don't, I hate those goals when they're scored more mm-hmm. than almost anything because it becomes the the old the 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 vibe is, is a skater razor it's the wait a sec i had everything covered how the hell yeah, did that yeah. go in yeah I, it I, was behind I, the goal line right, right, right it wasn't even a shot on right net. and now that you look to blame your goalie as a skater but you're saying what the what the heck yeah. and I would almost rather my team might get beat on that perfect bang bang place, so and I can look at that either me, the defenseman, or another guy over there. I'm like, dude, you got to cover him on the back door. But yeah. I know that that seal is there. I saw a few years ago. It was, I think, it was two seasons ago. I think this is when you were getting about your second year broadcast, maybe even your first year or something. Uh-huh. I kind of remember this. There was a plethora of yeah. these short side goals yeah. because everybody was going RVH. And I'm like, what yeah. the hell is RVH? Like everybody's RVing in the NHL right now. I don't yeah. know what the hell this means, right? <laughs> just you like the world, everyone's got an RV now. That's true. I need yeah. an RV. I do. Yeah. I need to yeah. go just tool around the area. Yeah. Um, anyways, I would rather just have the goalie stand up, but, uh, it's it's my layman terms. So I'm a we'll forward. Go. I'm a skater. I'm not. So a I'm going to give you the argument, and and, the, and you'll know this goal exactly is the 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 Nordstrom goal on Freddie Anderson. Yeah, yeah. Where he does an RVH in Game Seven in mm-hmm. Boston, mm-hmm. and the puck goes through just along the ice or six seven inches off of the ice. Nordstrom bangs in a rebound because. Freddie Anderson can't hold the post, and they lose in Game 7, and he's a dog because he gave up that goal. Whereas if he's in an RVH, then he takes that away. So so you're, you're also trying to take – it's All right. that's, that's what you're trying to take away. And you, you as a goaltender, you could also say, all right, if Raffle puts that you know anywhere but there, it hits him and doesn't go in. Whereas if he's standing up, maybe it goes through his five hole, maybe it doesn't seal as well. So, again, it comes down to percentages and odds, and that's what – guys of the technique is right now but it's certainly being thought about in the goalie world in a big way on how to uh, take that away because to your point it's deflating and it looks bad and it doesn't make any sense thank you you agree yeah. let's rc take agree. that clip right there and just yeah. take that one and use that a promo <laughs> and razor will be out of the goalie union before you know it um uh Send the hate mail yeah uh <laughs> All right, Swayman, back up for Tukarask starting the playoffs. Like it, don't like it, thoughts on it. What do you think? Back I like it. The, back he's up a on backup. the bench or back a... up altogether? I th- so that's where I, I think he's the second guy. I think if, if they need another goalie, he's going in. Mm-hmm. I am not sure he's the one sitting on the bench. No, he is. He is. Okay. But right. she, but she said post. He's the guy. He, he's sitting on the bench. He's backing him up. Okay. Um. As long as Tuca's fine with it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me who's there. It, it could be, it could be you. It could be no Ronald McDonald. No, it could be, no. It really no, could me. be because <laughs> as long as Tuca's happy when he goes over and commercial breaks and has a chat, and the water bottle gets put on the boards properly, and he goes about his warm up properly, and 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 Tuca's happy with it, then I'm happy. That that's the way I see it. As long as because okay. I don't think you necessarily. It, it's not like. I can't imagine Tuca going down within a minute and a half of a game and mm-hmm. needing him and changing a series. Um, and that's the way I see it. So as long as Tuca's comfortable with it, then then great. And he but there's earned no doubt it. He, he, he earned, earned it. it. He earned being the guy who's up next to play. Mm-hmm. Okay. We agree on that. And, yeah. and, and Bruce, he was asked the question post-game later in the Zoom. And uh, he said, yeah, he's, he's going to be the guy. He's going to yeah. be – he's going to back him up. Yeah, um, the Bruins are fortunate, very fortunate, especially. And we're going to do a preview, see a series preview coming up in a couple of days. But look, the Washington Capitals right now have Vanacek, Vitek Vanacek, and then right now Craig Anderson is their backup. Samsonov is out still on the COVID protocol list again. 
he and Kuznetsov are on yeah. there again. So I don't know his status. They don't. I don't know if they know their status just yet. So point is this: the Bruins, if he got to Halak, they got three good goalies, mm-hmm. three better than good, great, great options. So it's a, it's a position of strength, no question. No question. To the yeah, we'll dig in, but there's that's a massive advantage back there. Massive yeah. advantage going into this round. All right, coming up, uh, we're going to tell you in just a moment uh, what we have planned for the next couple of days here on Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor, and uh, we're going to set you up for a week. We hope it should be some great content. Uh, our plans, at least, are to provide you with some. Uh, we want to give you the schedule, too. But before that, we're going to quickly tell you about uh, the two companies that have been kind enough to come sponsor us uh, for the time being right now, Fazenda Coffee, F-A-Z-E-N-D-A. That's how you spell it, folks, fazendacoffee.com. If you go online and you use the code MORNINGBREW, you'll get 15% off. They are dedicated to making and roasting the perfect cup of coffee. I've been truly enjoying all the different blends that they've sent me. I know you've been traveling a bit. I know you got a couple of, I, I see the, the mug behind you there. Any of the oh, yeah. snap I got the chill? Mug. I, yeah, bring... I've got the snap chill in the fridge here. Yeah, still Beautiful. Killing it. Beautiful. Perfect, yeah. Out, outstanding. Uh, make sure that uh, you go check them out. Um, and I'm not teasing anybody. I'm not being cryptic. Mugs have been officially, not not only officially ordered, uh, they're in process of being produced. And uh, I just can't tell you the exact date that they're going to be here. But the people at Fazenda, we're going to give them some more mugs. And they're going to eventually help us out with that as well. So we really appreciate Fazenda Coffee Roasters, who do just a beautiful job. And the other people that are doing an awesome job with us is Sparks, the skate sharpening company that has taken the world by storm the last couple of years. Um, if you've got any, whether it's yourself, your family, your kids in the neighborhood, I'll tell you what's a great thing, Razor. Some people I know have bought one unit in a neighborhood and then they all share the cost, you know, of the machine, but then also they'll buy rings, whatever they like, five, eight, seven, eight, whatever it is. And then they just go use it when they need it once a week. They, they make an agreement. It's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's my buddy not... in Ottawa does that. He goes over to his, his his buddy's garage across the street. They go down in the ba- you know, down in the basement actually, not in the garage, down in the basement. And he fires it up, and then they're out of there. And it's simple as that. It's so just it's an, a great idea. It for the hockey playing family, it is amazing. SparksHockey.com, uh, and if you order using Morning Brew, they are offering Morning Brew listeners free shipping. Nobody else is getting this offer right now. While Spark Sharpener is partnering with us here at morning brew with jaffe and razor they are offering that it is so easy convenient and so clean it makes your skates sharp and clean i love it so thanks both to sparks and to fazenda coffee all right this is our plan coming up and i say plan because things do change in the podcast uh, youtube world but i I think it's all going to be good plan on recording an episode uh wednesday with a Boston Bruin player. The Bruins have the day off, but there's going to be one, maybe two players kind enough to come in and uh, sit down and chat with Razor and myself. And we're just going to shoot the crap with them, you know, just talk about some things. Um, looking forward to that. I, I I just think, you know, it's going to be great to be able to finally get in touch with some of the guys. It's been you and I, fans are probably like, oh, I'm sick of Jeff. Yeah, Razor, enough especially us. Jeff. But uh, we'll talk to one of these guys, or maybe two of them. And then uh, what do you say by Friday we get out a, a series preview show uh, featuring the Boston Bruins and the Washington Capitals series that starts on Saturday night at 7.15? Give us a couple days to dig into matchups and who, who lines up well, who, is the, uh, who are the, the spark for mm-hmm. each team that can, that can be the, the, the guy who comes out of nowhere. And we all know that teams that go on runs always need those guys and they need the lines and they need the the right matchups so yeah let's dig in the next couple of days and send it out this week by yeah we'll, we'll get it out where the plan is to we'll uh probably get that one going thursday and get it out by friday for you so at least one if not two interviews with bruins players is what the plan is and then in a series preview show and then saturday night seven fifteen uh, on nbc sport or actually on nbc uh, is going to be game one. Hearing rumblings that the next game will be Monday. It seems kind of obvious. After that, nothing is confirmed. You would think Wednesday would be game three, which would mean back in Boston. 
after that razor, I'm not sure if it would be Friday or if they would actually skip to go to Saturday. It will depend on if NBC wants the exclusive again in the window. The way it works, mm-hmm. folks, is in the first round, uh, the, the regionals, like Nesson, have the right to carry every game, except if NBC takes an exclusive on it. They're entitled to two of those per round. As it is right now, as it looks, the Boston Bruins and Washington Capitals is by far, and I mean not by far, (laughs) I mean like by Grand Canyon miles, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The marquee series that they're going to have in the playoffs. And people say, what about Pittsburgh and New York? And I say, what about Pittsburgh Mm -hmm. and New York? I mean, Pitt's a good, it's put, Pitt's a good hockey market. I mean, we, we, we know that and they do great in the ratings. The New York Islanders, it's New York, but it's not the New York Rangers. They don't do the yep. same, but they'll do it. Right. Then the, the Florida matchup is interesting. However, it is. it's going to be myopic. It's right. going to be narrow down in Florida. There's no Blackhawks to take that spot. There's no, yep. right? There's no, yeah, it makes sense. There's so, not even a Canadian team that can take it the next couple of weeks. Exactly. So I, I just, I, my gut tells me is that NBC will look to maximize two events so i would guess the game either four or five will be on nbc either saturday or sunday but these are just my guess Mm -hmm. guesses we we shall see um nothing else that i really want to cover on right here like i said kind of a commando version get through the game 56 i'm thrilled i gotta be honest with you partner i thought we'd get to 56 games i did i didn't Actually, no. I thought we'd get through the season. I didn't. I wasn't convinced we'd get to through fifty-six games. I, I, I just wasn't. I mean, I, I was convinced uh-huh. that we'd figure out a way to get to a Stanley Cup, especially with the warmer weather and the vaccines and stuff. But I wasn't sure that we would get, you know, through fifty-six games. But kudos to the league and to the players' association. Touch and go in February. Touch mm-hmm. and go in a big way in February. But uh, fortunately, the vaccines got rolled out. Fortunately. The players showed a lot of discipline and yep. a lot of responsibility to mm-hmm. both the union and the league. I think they're they're going to really need to be commended just as much as the league for all the the balls in the air and moving schedules and the, all of that. But it really came down to the players observing the protocol, and they did a very good job of that. The Bruins were as good as any team, only having mm-hmm. a few cases, so... Uh, good on them and 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 good on uh, good on all of us to get the vaccines that we have available to us and and certainly in Massachusetts I mean we're crushing the numbers so it's it's all positive and happy to get to 56 and happy to have the playoffs um, feel like there's not going to be any snafus just you know knock on wood but but we're well if anything it If anything, I think you're going to end up seeing more energy from the players because they're going to be able to do things like dinner together. Listen, we talked about it on one of the the shows on Nesson, where are they going to open up these protocols for the players when they're vaccinated? And and I'm glad the league did that because I think Mm -hmm. that's important, to your point, energy for the players. They they get to go and have dinner outside. They get to go and actually – play golf and be together, like go hang out together at home mm-hmm. and not feel guilty about it, not feel like they're, they're doing something wrong. And uh, that's, I think that's a big bonus for the guys. That'll, that'll feel a lot different and having meetings, that's going to go a long way that they can all be in the room together and, and mm-hmm. just a simple thing, but, but to be in a dressing room together, no mask, it'll feel normal for them. Yeah. There will be some protocol still as there should be. But they've got mm, to get yeah. through it, and and if they do, it will. I, I think it'll bring a whole different light to how the players view things. So I think yeah. that should help uh, the playoff intensity. All right, that'll wrap this morning brew with Jaffe and Razor up. Uh, we will be back. Big with week, you. big week. Yes, a lot of talking. Uh, hopefully, a lot of listening to some fun stuff too. We hope we can make it happen. Our plan is to make it happen for you, folks. So uh, enjoy your day. Bruins lose uh, two to one to the Washington Capitals, but put forth a fantastic effort by many young players up from the uh, taxi slash AHL squad. Razor and I will be back with you in at least well, let's call it one, maybe two days with more stuff as the series gets set to begin on Saturday night with the Boston Bruins and the Washington Capitals. Enjoy your day, everybody, and have a wonderful cup of coffee.